having bought two FlexiSpot standing desk frames and making desks out of those and covering those in videos, FlexiSpot offered to send me their new standing desk frame, the E7 Pro, no strings attached, so sure, I accepted. And when I got it, uh, I couldn't carry the box down to the basement. It was too heavy. I actually had to take stuff out of it. It's a lot heavier than the uh, basic FlexiSpot standing desk frames that I've used so far. And putting it together, I realized this is a lot more complicated than the last two, so I ended up consulting the manual much sooner than I expected to. So I had been assembling this thing in the wrong order, and I'd also been using the wrong length of screws. So on this one, the legs have this front-to-back asymmetry in that the uh, leg posts are actually further to the back than centered. And on this one, there's no axle between the two legs to keep them in sync. They each have their own motor. So that'll be interesting to investigate how it keeps all that in sync. And this one has a relatively larger box to go in the middle that both of the motors plug into, plus the controls, plus the power cord. It seems to move up and down a little bit faster than the ones I've used so far, or at least it does with no load on it. This uh, seems a bit extreme. Let's try it on the floor. But first I thought I'd weigh that frame. That's about 32 kilograms or 70 pounds for the frame alone. Sixty-four and a half centimeters, or twenty-five and a half inches, is the lowest. <laughs> That's uh, fifty-one inches, or one hundred twenty-nine centimeters now. Okay, way off center load. That's quite a bit slower now, but it seems to keep the motors in sync. Oh. And shifting around, I guess it detected that uh, something went wrong. But if I'm in the middle, it comes up a bit faster. I picked the uh, 24 by 47 inch desktop to go with those legs. But I realize now those legs are big and sturdy enough. They really meant to go with bigger desktops. It's just I didn't need such a big desk. And the bottom of those legs is 26 and a half inches long or 68 centimeters, which is uh, more than the desktop is wide. Again, it's meant for bigger desktops than I've got here. And here's one of the leg motors. And I also popped open the main control box and had a look in there. But then I quickly realized I need a better place to put this down for probing this thing further. Got the electronics on the desk now and I want to see how those legs stay synchronized even if it's unevenly loaded. So there has to be some sort of feedback for that. And the connector going to the motor has got uh, six pins plugs into this controller board right here. And I've worked out that the motor is between these two pins here. I've put a scope probe on each lead to a motor and now if I move the desk up... You can see the yellow trace went up but it was PWM between up and down and that's effectively to control the voltage that the motor sees because the motor being inductive is not so sensitive to these transients but it just goes by the average voltage and by just moving back and forth it effectively changed the voltage. And now if I move down, so this is a start, uh, both lines go high and then this line wiggles back and forth between high and low again to control the effective voltage. And that's how it drives the motor to make it move up and down at different speeds. But we still need some kind of a feedback to keep the two sides in sync. And so we have this pin and this pin, and those are outputs from a quadrature encoder. We also need ground and plus 5 volts for that to drive it. And I've just put the scope probe on those pins. And now if I move that desk up and down, we get this sort of signal. So we've got two waveforms. Uh, they've unfortunately got a little bit of noise on them, so ignoring that part, the little spikes on here, you'll see they are kind of like a square wave, but they're out of phase with each other. And that tells us the direction and how fast it's moving. So imagine we have a rotating disc with half of the edge black and two detectors that detect the color of it. So as long as both of those detect black, we know the disc is somewhere between this angle and this angle. But if this detector now detects white, we know the disc must have rotated this way and is now between this angle and this angle. And if it continues to rotate, this one turns white. And then this one turns black. And then this one turns black again. And from that we can figure out the direction of rotation and roughly how much it's rotated by. Except in real life we want a bit more resolution, so we would typically have a disk 
with many more zones on it and the detector spaced accordingly. And as long as we keep counting the pulses, we'll know where we are. But the problem is, how do we know where we started? And having accounted for all the pins on here, I don't see any mechanism to give us absolute position, so let's do a bit of an experiment. So I'm just going to unplug one of these motors and let's try moving up and down. Okay, now it says E22, so it, it noticed something is wrong here. Let's try moving down. And it does that a little bit. Okay, so let's just keep clicking this down one little bit at this time. It knows things are kind of wrong right now. And now this desk has definitely got a bit of a lean to it. Uh, and now let's plug the other motor in. And the problem now is, how is it going to figure out how these legs go in sync with each other? So let's try moving the desk up. Oh, it won't let me. Let's try moving it down. And okay, that worked. Can I go up? No. So I can only go down. And one of these legs is going to bottom out. Oh, okay, so now one leg just bottomed out, and let's keep going down. And now they've both bottomed out, and... And let's see... Ah, see, and now it's back to showing numbers, because now it knows both legs have bottomed out, so that must be the bottom, and by keeping count, it can now display what height we're at, it's back in sync. And even if I disconnect power and plug it back in, it still remembers what height we're at, so it must have some non-volatile storage to remember what height it was last at. But let's trick it some more. I've disconnected power to the power supply part of this thing, so now everything is off and it assumes everything is where it's supposed to be, except I unplugged one of the motors and I have a little benchtop power supply here, and I'm gonna run some power into one of the motors. And you can see now, one side of the desk is dropping because I'm running power into that. So now, once again, the desk is all crooked. And now let's connect this back together properly. And reconnect power. And our desk is all crooked. And this thing thinks everything is okay and just moves everything up and down in parallel. And it won't know that there's a problem until I think I hit bottom on one of the legs. There, and it just noticed there's some problem. Oh. So now it just realizes there's a problem with a collision on the bottom. Ah, there, finally. Okay, now... It realized there's a problem and it's moving only the other leg. And now it's back in sync and confident that it's correct. And if this desk is unevenly loaded, it just knows that one motor is falling behind and gives that one more power and keeps it in sync without noticeably going out of level. The next thing I'm curious about is how these telescoping legs work. I assume there's some kind of a screw inside here. But uh, given that they more than double in length, it pretty much has to be two separate screws that are somehow coupled to each other. I assume telescopically, so that one screw fits inside of another. But that's awfully complicated, so let's pop that apart. Now what I don't know is how to get this leg apart. The only thing I see is these four screws, so I'll try to undo those and see what happens. Oh, this does not come out. Hmm. My next theory is if I just overextend this leg, maybe the screws will unthread and the whole thing will pop apart. So I'll just drive the motor with DC and there's no computer to stop it from overextending. So I just overextended this leg by an inch and it just bottoms out somehow, so don't know what to do next. Oh. Oh, maybe it's this sleeve is hitting this leg here, so maybe if I just... No, some kind of internal stop, but we see we have at least this much overlap on this leg segment, because this is as far as it goes normally, and this is how far I am now. I just don't know how to pull this out. I just took the motor off the top of the leg, 
And now let's see if uh, this end lets me take this apart. Okay, we have at least one screw in here. And I've just bottomed out again. Not having any luck with this. I got it off. It's a keyed sort of thing. Oh, and it still doesn't come apart. Oh, like the bottommost segment, it seems to hit that sleeve there. Oh, <gasps> got it out. So this plastic sleeve has got these little tabs that hook into notches down here, and I guess if I just yanked on it hard enough, eventually the sleeves pop out and that's how I got at it. So now we have uh, this thing here. And it's still not the wiser how the thing inside works. Maybe if I yank on this one hard enough, it'll pop out like this one did. Ta-da! So now the top segment and the bottommost segment are just empty tubes. Now I just realized if I pop these things off, they have pins that extend into the white sleeve in there. And that probably holds that in place. There it goes. So the problem is I have now popped this thing quite apart and I'm still none the wiser about how this thing actually works. Because the rest of the mechanism is inside of this tube. And this was crimped here and here to put these uh, plastic things on the end. Um, so I'd like to get these off, but I would permanently damage it if I do that. It just bottoms out. So to take this part apart any further, I have to grind away these crimps. And if I do that, there's no way to put this back together in working order. So this thread cannot be the one that also engages this part that comes out here because as both of these extend out, this and this part don't touch each other anymore. So inside of this thing there has to be another sort of threaded rod to push the other part out. And so we have the thread that goes in here, that's this part here, and that must go inside of the other thread because they have to nest somehow. And on the end of this thread, there's going to be some kind of a barb that engages slots inside of this thing here. So as we turn this thing, that'll also turn this thread, which is much larger because it has to fit around this one. So this thread essentially moves with this plastic nut, as in it doesn't separate from that, and it actually has to push against this nut to transfer the push that goes from here to this and then onto here. And as both of these turn, this one comes out this way, and the plastic nut that I assume is inside there, pushes that way, and that pushes out this part here. And now I just hope I can still put all this stuff back together so that I have my standing desk back. I'm just getting ready to remate the bottom segment with the middle segment, and I notice here's my mark for how far this thing ever extends. So even at full extension we have this much overlap between the segments to keep it nice and rigid. And this sleeve needs to insert right at the end of the stroke because there's holes in there that allow these tabs to flip in there a bit better when we're at the end. And here's the top segment that fits in there and the same thing with those tabs. These tabs here once this part is down here, it can kind of bend backwards into here, and that allows it to release from this part here. But in normal operation, this is never a problem, because this is as far it'll extend in normal operation, so that uh, these tabs always hold this thing secure to this, unless I'm taking the whole thing apart. Aha! Uh -huh. It's not ruined! I deliberately had that leg way extended when I put it back together to get this YouTube thumbnail. Now I just have to get them back into sync. And there we go! 
All this stuff about synchronizing the legs can be avoided if you just have one motor with a shaft that goes over to the other leg and that keeps them in sync. But that means you need a set of bevel gears in the top of each leg which is mechanically more complicated. So this is electronically simpler but overall not that much simpler. And this simpler, cheaper one has only got two segment legs which means it can't adjust as low or as high as the other one. But for my purposes the range of this one is adequate. So I was sent this standing desk for free. Would I buy one of these for a desk of my own? Nope. Because for a desktop of two feet by four feet that I've got here, the smaller, cheaper FlexiSpot standing desk frames are a better deal. This one can go much larger than that. But I've also realized since then, for other things you might want a bigger desktop, say for instance working on electronics or crafts because Quite often, you know, you're working on stuff close up and that can get bad on the back if you're hunched over, things like that. So to just be able to raise it up by a little bit, that makes that sort of close up work much easier. And I think the same thing is true for a lot of crafts like model building or sewing. Say with a sewing machine, you'd want it at this height and then if you're picking apart some seam by hand, then you're hunched over stuff, so this height works much better. And of course, you can also work standing. Now, this isn't a sponsored video per se, but I have affiliate links for FlexiSpot stuff, so I make a little bit of money that way. So I have some interest in not making FlexiSpot look terrible, so just be aware of that.